Hello, I'm Nick Briggs, executive producer of Big Finish Productions and voice of the Daleks and lots of other Doctor Who monsters, and you're listening to the legend of the Travelling TARDIS radio show. Oh, yes. My name is Christian Basil. Years ago, I had an idea. I got myself a TARDIS, took it to new places, met a lot of new people, took some great pictures, and talked Doctor Who. From Krypton Radio and the creators of the Hanging With web show, this is the legend of the traveling TARDIS. Join me on my latest adventures and become part of the legend. And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the legend of the Traveling TARDIS. For those of you joining us on iHeart, iTunes, Spotify, Podbean, which I just recently found out by mistake that we're on Podbean. We are all over the universe, somewhere on some social media platform that, and if you want to tell me where else we are, by all means. I found out we are on Podcoin. I, I, I don't, I, yeah, everybody's giving me a very weird look, but Podcoin uh, believe it or not, I don't. I don't want to promo something that uh, that uh, that you know. I don't want to give a free publicity, but somebody had introduced me to Podcoin. If you want to make money listening to podcasts, you get the app. You listen. Yeah, everybody's giving me the thumbs up. I'm like, what's Podcoin? Podcoin is if you listen to podcasts and that's what you do all day. You get the app. You download it and you listen to podcasts and they pay you. Believe it or not, I, I'm not actually promoting this, but some I, I thought it was interesting. If you're going to listen to your favorite, now you really have to listen to a lot of podcasts. They're not just going to like one podcast and you get like uh, like a, a you know fifty dollars off a of Starbucks. No, they want you to listen to an incredible amount of podcasts. But I mean, if it's something that you do normally, then it's totally worth it. I mean, you get like five dollars off of Starbucks or something like that. I think I thought it was a really cool idea. But anyway, I digress. Everybody for joining us, happy. Big finish day. Yeah. It, if you're listening to the premiere Yay. of this, it is June 22nd, this Saturday, Big Finish, and we want to give Big Finish all of our love and respects because this episode is going to be about Big Finish and our favorite episodes. The entire team is practically here, and we're going to talk about our fam- favorite Big Finish episodes. And if you remember, they took me down with the Holy Terror. Some of them gave him some good vibes. Some of them gave me some bad. So if we are familiar with the uh, with our fellow brethren's other Big Finish favorite audios. We're going to be talking about that more. The good, the bad, and the ugly. But first, let me introduce the cast that's going to be here. Um, first of all, I'm going to razz her because I think today, as we're recording, she sent out my TARDIS back to me. This is author Mackenzie Fleur. And you had a great time in, at Who North America with uh, Mr. Keith uh, Bradbury. How did everything go up there? It was eventful, uh, it, not the actual event itself, as in it was raining cats and dogs the entire time, severe weather. Going home was another thing because I had been up for 23 <clears throat> hours. I had to avoid two tornadoes, avoid two accidents. Uh, there was probably something else that happened during that. It was very eventful. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> but I had a great time. <laughs> Yeah, I was at the same time you were at the convent. Your uh, well, I guess for a better term, convention or your gathering over there. I was with the Hanging With team over at IndyCon, and we had a great time. I don't know if the team's up on here listening, but uh, we had a great time out there. Got to meet a lot of new people. Got to l- see a lot of very talented people, artists, creators, uh, actors. Definitely an actress. Um, Gosh, I'm going to I'm going to find it in just a moment there oh, as I'm grace. introducing. I'm going to try to use the introductions to find the girl. But I got to meet a girl who is going to be in a series called United We Fall. And uh, Ella Grace Helton. 
Ella Grace Helton, little girl who, uh, I don't know if you've been seeing the Traveling TARDIS recently. I got her picture. She's going to be on ABC, hopefully very shortly, with uh, another cast member named Will Sazo. Now, if anybody remembers their Doctor Who TV movie, Will Sazo was the nurse who fell over seeing Paul again when he was, <laughs> for a better term, Frankensteined out of the freezer. So she's gonna, he's going to be playing her uh, she, he's going to be playing her dad. So coincidence? I have no idea, but I was like, yes, there, there's a connection here. There is a great connection here. And I would love to interview Will Sazzo, but that's another, neither here nor there. Melanie Dean. I teased. Hello. Hello. How you doing? Happy big finish day. Happy big finish day. Mr. He's he, Christian Basil is the one that got me out to big finish. Funny enough. There you go. Well, way back when in the convention scene, um, finding out, uh, was it, I swing, I swung by the booths you were working at the time, and they swing had by. these awesome little grab bags where it was just, you know, the, the, the lure of, hmm, what, what f- rare finds are inside these little brown paper bags for you that you can have for only $20. And mm-hmm. inside of them was always a big finish, and that's, that's what got me hooked. One, the, the lure of what, what's in there? And also talking to Christian because he's a really cool dude. Cool dude, oh. and uh, and uh, yeah, big finish. Hey, you know what my favorite, and, and you know what my favorite thing is is when you get people assimilate. I, I think I speak for all uh, all, all the panelists here. Um, when you get that person to become a Whovian, and that moment that they're locked in, you there's a pang that goes into your heart, and you're just like, yes, I've made <laughs> yeah. another. <laughs> We've made another. My journey to the dark side was complete at exactly. that point. I was already painting who. I was already going through the episodes. I was going back, you know, re- rediscovering the fourth Doctor when I was watching from long ago. But you got me back in and just sunk your claws in, and in I came. I was so, your gateway I'm drug, back. and I'm proud of <laughs> Speaking of gateway drugs, and there was really no segue to this. Hello, Dr. Freedom. How you doing, Brian Perez? <laughs> well, while they were all doing that, this past weekend, I was down at Origins Game Fair in Columbus. That's right. uh, yeah, hanging out with Wendy Padbury and Fraser Hines, and it was just a heck of a time. And by all plus, to top it all off, it was the Pride Day celebration parade and all that, too. So it was kind of a bonus. It was a great time in and out of the hotel. So, so what was your favorite <laughs> moment over there at that con? Oh, heck, favorite moment. Because um, I know you were a panelist out there. That was cool. Hard to define because, like I said, it was kind of a weird time there. Like I said, well, we were, I think the greatest moment, I hate to say it, was we were sitting outside just sitting there watching the parade and, you know, fresh food being made. But like I said, then a little bit afterwards we were talking, you know, before we left with uh, Wendy Padbury and Fraser Hines and just had a great time talking with them and getting to know them a little bit better. And So, like I said, great time just that whole day. Oh, I'm jealous. You got Fraser Hines and Wendy Padbury. I've seen Fraser before. I haven't seen Wendy. And I'm just like, dang it. <laughs> I want to go see these people. They never come to Florida anymore. Never, ever, 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 ever. Well, there's no convention here that they're coming to anymore. So I, I digress there. But no segue whatsoever again. So I'm bringing in Mr. Mark Muncy, better known as the author of Erie, Florida. Mr. Mark Muncy, did you have anything special going on this past weekend? This past weekend, I was signing books at the uh, Shop of Wonders, which is right around the corner from Hagrid's Magical Motorbike Adventure, which had just opened uh, the day before. So we got to see that. We got to see the grand opening with Warwick Davis and uh, um, all the Weasley twins and Luna and and Robbie Coltrane appeared via satellite. Uh, It was very cool. A good friend and fellow haunter of mine, uh, Cody Mac, uh, uh, Cody McIntyre, who uh, did the Radley Haunted House down here in St. Pete. He uh-huh. was the scenic designer for that ride. So we got a little sneak peek with him. Uh, and then, um, like I said, and then we were signing books while there was a 10-hour wait right in front of our store. <laughs> so, um, so we got to talk to a lot of new people and tell lots of good stories. Got lots of ghost stories about... The magic world of Harry Potter. There's some ghosts there now. So there, there, uh, there was a friend of mine who sent me, uh, who sent, who posted a couple of friends of mine who posted messages, and what they were saying was, "It's an eight hour wait, yeah. but it's so worth it." I'm like, eh? right. three minute ride, three minute roller coaster ride. Well, you know, it was there. There was, um, like I said, it was a pretty amazing day. The first, the the grand opening event was cool, and that was a very spectacular stage. There were block. There were all these boxes in front of the door, and they all. Had everybody in the wand, you know, raise their wands and say Wingardium Leviosa, and all the boxes flew away so you could get into the ride. 
Uh, that was pretty cool. They had a lot of special events that day. Um, and then uh, by the second day, the lines were down to about four hours. And now they're averaging about three. If you want to avoid the crowd, come in January. <laughs> <laughs> Did you even get to go on the ride? Did you even try to? I still to have not on the ride. We, oh, we went through the queue line and got to see all the stuff Cody had done. And and that was pretty cool. And then uh, we did not get to go through the the ride itself just because uh you know a little bit of a bad heart and the missus mm-hmm. is not a fan of roller coasters. So we just oh gotcha. It, so uh, if it makes you feel better, uh, because I'm kind of a little bit more of a Disney fanatic, I to this day have not gone on to the Avatar ride, nor have I gone into Avatar. I haven't gone either, Christian. I just and remember, I'm a pass holder for like the past twelve years. I understand. I just don't like crowds. I'm like, no, I'm a pass yeah, holder. I, I want to be exactly. able to walk onto my ride. No, seriously, guys. I, I, I remember the day that it opened, and somebody told me it was a three hour wait, and I go, "That's not bad for a ride." And he goes, "No, you don't understand. That's a three hour wait to get into Avatar. <laughs> yeah, to it was a three hour wait just to get edge. to the land for crying out loud. Yeah, well, Galaxy's Edge is going to be a nightmare. Insane. Well, Galaxy's Edge will open." Then that way you could get into Avatar, and then once the next thing's open, we'll go into Toy Story Land, and then you know you just kind of have to you know plan it uh, out. <laughs> the big thing with the the Harry Potter thing was what they did was they uh, they closed the line at five o'clock, and the park closed at nine. Yeah, but they didn't let the last the last people were still riding at midnight. That's how long mm-hmm. the line was, and so they were walking them out. Security was walking them out individually. So after the ride, so that was crazy. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, after Galaxy Edge open, there's not going to be a line at anything else. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. If somebody told me, if I'm not, if I'm not mistaken, Mark, there was no line for anything else. Uh, was, yeah, pretty you much. You could walk into everything. Everybody. You could walk onto anything else. Uh, Spider Man had a pretty good line too because the movie's coming out. So that, right. but that's what everybody was doing. They would have one person wait in line while the rest of their group went and hit Spider Man and stuff nearby because they kept thinking, oh, it's going to bust open. We're going to come back, and then nah, never did. Oh, good grief. Yeah, you know what, Melanie? I, th- this is my prediction when Galaxy Edge opens here in Florida. Where it's going to be a line that starts at Avatar in Animal Kingdom. And then oh, uh, it's going to be in the other park when well, it starts. I haven't heard that. I think they're already giving out fast passes so you can get into the land. land so yeah. you might not even be able to even just see it from afar. You'll be over there at Toy Story Mania just kind of looking over and seeing the tree line. <laughs> You need a zip line there. I'll be at Epcot. I'll be at Epcot. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's going. While you're waiting in line, you can listen to Big Finish. Exactly. Now, now you see where we're going with this. I yeah. love his segue better than mine. Mine is just garbage. Uh, <laughs> and they're, and they're going to start opening the, uh, what is it, the, the gondolas. Did I pronounce that right? The gondolas. Yeah. To go from, par- from, yeah. from hotel to park. I want to see that. And uh, I was always skeptical about the gondolas because they were like, does anybody know we're in Florida? <laughs> Rain. There's no AC in them. Rain, no. lightning, yeah. everything. There better be AC in these things. I, I heard there. It, it's kind of the same thing as the the Orlando Eye, that they're the same thing. It has its own yeah. AC and stuff like that. So no, So hopefully, if it does break down, you know, it, it doesn't go with that. Sage, I know we got to go to a commercial break, and I didn't forget the Who knew news. So. All right, team. Um, I got everybody. I hope I got everybody. So, everybody, we're going to go to commercial break. We got to get these bills paid. We're going to come back and talk about our favorite Big Finish episodes to all of our friends out there. Happy Big Finish Day. I don't know what that means either. But anyway, uh, if you're listening to Vermeer, it is June 22nd, and we want to wish everybody at Big Finish a wonderful and big, happy Big Finish Day. I still don't know what that means. Sage, let's go to commercial, and let's continue to become part of the legend. Famous Faces and Funnies in Melbourne, Florida is leading the way in pop culture fun. From comic books and graphic novels to Funko Pops and collector's items, Famous Faces and Funnies has it all. Rick Shea and the professional team at Famous Faces and Funnies are friendly and knowledgeable. Whether you're looking for toys, props, collector treasures, or a new comic book, Famous Faces and Funnies is your one-stop shop. To find Famous Faces and Funnies on Facebook and Twitter, just type at FFFComics. Who's who, what's hot, and what's not? 2019 saw some amazing new creative talents, and now you can peek behind the scenes at the hottest indie creative artists in this year's edition of 25 Hottest Indie Authors, Artist Advocates 2019 Magazine. Published by the renowned And I Thought Ladies, this is a -a one-of-a-kind look into the brightest rising stars in the creative universe. Get yours today at magcloud.com and at andwethought.com. 
Mature and curvaceous Juliana faces the consequences of having two online lovers. The insanely jealous Aaron and the kind, sexy, silver fox Bobby. To make her life more complicated, she must weather the wrath of her husband Rocco, who has discovered his suspicion and uncovers a deep, dark secret. And there are more secrets to uncover. Will these secrets come out? Can Juliana survive this tsunami of impossible situations? Will she be able to rebuild the life she once had? Or will the burden of the past prove too much? Is there even a happily ever after in her future? Read what happens when you pick up your copy of With All of Me Too today from joannesbooks.com or amazon.com. Are you looking for a used car? Check out the Public Auto Auction app from CarAuctionNetworks.com. You can download the app on your phone or tablet and use it for free, and there's no registration required. You can see what's for sale at car auctions, such as bank repos, dealer trade-in, surplus government vehicles, or impounds. There are plenty of cheap used cars and trucks listed in the app. You can save a lot of money with the Public Auto Auction app. You can also see and bid at car auctions online. Get the Public Auto Auction app for iOS at the Apple Store. Or on Google Play. Or simply go to CarAuctionNetwork.com. That's Car Auction Network. Com. Change your life with Ray K Distance Energy from Energy Right Now. What is Ray K? Well, Ray K Distance Energy is positive energy transferred over distance by Ray K Energy practitioners to help you heal and live your best life. How will Ray K help me? Ray K Energy transfers can help increase your income, better your health, help you lose weight, even stop smoking. It can be used to buy or sell real estate, even find lost items. Wow, Ray K Energy seems pretty powerful. It is, and you can start calling on Ray K Energy today. Just reach out to practitioner Leia Schiller online at energyrightnow.wordpress.com. Leia Schiller. Where can I find her online again? Unlock your potential today with Energy Right Now at energyrightnow.wordpress.com. And welcome back to The Legend of the Traveling TARDIS. My name is Melanie Dean. I'm kind of filling back in till Christian reboots his computer because technology is a wonderful and amazing thing. I am here with authors Mackenzie Floor and Mark Muncy and Dr. Freedom himself, Brian Burris. And in a moment, we will have Christian Basil back, our fearless leader. But until then, we're going to persevere. We're going to go ahead and hit on the Who Knew News with Sage Ia. Love that intro. So I have some wonderful news to start out with. We are going to start out with some Emmy news. Ooh. Yes, because it's been a little while since Doctor Who has been in the Emmys, but they are up for all kinds of things. We have Best Drama Series, and guess who's up for Best Drama Actress? <gasps> Jodie Whittaker. Isn't that awesome? So we what? also have Yeah, I know. We also have Supporting Actor and Actress. So um, Bradley Walsh is up for uh, Best Supporting Actor. Mandip Gill is up for Supporting Actress. And no surprise to anybody, they are up for best writing in a drama for Rosa. Oh, oh absolutely brilliant. Back. Well, they've been submitted. Um, the nominations won't happen until mm-hmm. July. July, yeah. Don't, no. don't, don't burst the bubble. Actually, it's just good to hear we've actually got stuff submitted this time around. Though. It, and there's mm-hmm. more. There's more. Yeah. Um, best costumes is for the Battle of, and somebody else say that. Back to Color Profile Plotorius. Thank nah. you. <laughs> yeah. That one. Okay. It's the and, um, of Core F. Carlos. That's Bless it. You. So for best costumes. Mm. So there's also best music composition for the Demons of Punjab. Mm-hmm. And then best production design in a narrative period fantasy for the Ghost Monument. Demons of Punjab for that music was very, very epic because there's so many scenes that weren't uh, dialogue driven and that you saw a lot of emotion. So it's really cool to hear that the, the, the score behind that, since it was a kind of an indicator for the audience to know, you know, have that extra emotion going on, what they're seeing with their eyes. That's great that, that, that it's been submitted. Yes, it's incredibly exciting. So, and I know earlier um, Christian had said a happy big finish day for everybody out mm-hmm. there. Um, also, on the 22nd of June, it is the Great American Campout, which is also known as the Great American Backyard Campout. So that is a perfect time. If you're camping out in the backyard, you can listen to your Big Finish audio around the campfire. There we go. Isn't that? That's kind of cool. And um, they have announced um, just earlier this week that November will see the release of the Doctor Who multi-Doctor story, Daughter of the Gods 
which features the first and second doctors and big finish has revealed the cover for that. So if anybody wants to pop over to big finish, you can actually see what that cover reveal looks like. They have, have they said anything about who the cast is yet? Or they just kind of little by little kind of teasing us. Little by little, they are teasing us. It is a beautiful cover though. Gee, don't you wish you could see what I see? No. (laughs) Yes. No, As I fair. look to the side no of my fair. computer frame. <laughs> well, that is my Hunu news for today. I am going to cut it short so that we can jump right in to the big finish. Well, folks, uh, yeah. Well, if you were uh, had a couple, were here a couple episodes ago, you heard the team um, take on my gateway drug into big finish, which was the Holy Terror. Each one of us has picked their favorite big finish, and we're going to be, be talking about what we love about big finish, what, what, what excites us, what may not excite us as much, but we've all picked our favorite episodes. Neither one of us has told each other what those episodes are. So without further ado, randomly picking from the top, because it just happens to be the person on top of my screen, we're going to start with Mr. Mark Muncy and his favorite Big Finish audio. What is your favorite Big Finish audio and why? Well, I've got to say my favorite Big Finish series is Jago and Lightfoot. But as much as I love that series, uh, as much as I love that series, my favorite audio is one called Kingmaker. And it was a Peter Davison from the main range. I heard of that. And it starts with uh, him trying to... um, He's he's being hunted by a giant killer robot that is his uh, publishing agent. uh, Oh, that's right. Because he hasn't finished his book series uh, that he was due. (laughs) And... um, and I think that, and, and and somebody's like, well, that's pretty serious for a book, you know, for a, for a publisher to send that. And it's like, have you ever met an author? I think a giant killer robot with death machine, your death rays is you know, the least of it. Uh, you know, but uh, it starts there, and uh, he basically goes back through. Um, he has to re- solve the mystery of Richard the Third's missing uh, nephews, and so what happened to them? And so it's this wild caper. Uh, they're doing a lot of digs, a little bit at New Who voices. So mm-hmm. there's a lot of impersonators. There's an Eccleston impersonator, and there's a few others that are just they're digging into all the accents, and it's hysterical. And um, and so it's it's a take on Shakespeare, it's a take on writing, and it even mentions why he's called Doctor Who uh, because the book series was called Doctor Who Investigates, the Doctor Who Investigates this, the Doctor Who Investigates that, and so it became. Doctor Who, according to the publisher. Oh, wow. So just a great, fun, all-around tribute to everything classic Who, and uh, just and plot twist you won't believe. It's just really well done. Uh, Mark, uh, what was your gateway? No, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Hmm? No, I th- Mike. Sorry, I was done. <laughs> I think, Brian, were you saying something, or am I just losing my mind? Yeah, I'm losing my mind. Mark, what was your gateway drug in the big finish? What was the audio that said you are hooked? Line well, uh, for me, it was during the dark days when there was no who, you know, uh, we had done the, the, the movie, I think had come and gone and there was still no who. And, um, and, uh, a fr- and I was missing, uh, Nicholas Courtney, the brigadier. He was, you know, my favorite. Uh, and, um, and so I stumbled on the companion Chronicles, mm-hmm. which is where Nicholas Courtney and a few others had, uh, uh, done adventures. You know, one was just the brigadier. And when I found that, fell in love with it and then the next one was the mahogany murders with jago and lightfoot and uh fell in love with that and i was like oh my gosh two of my favorite characters from uh classic talons of wing chiang and of course a couple years later they brought them back in their own series and that was from then on i couldn't get enough doctor who uh big finish and i still to this day every day on my drive i'm listening to a classic that i've already listened to and trying to spread it out with new ones that are coming out as fast as i as they can so I know, and Jago and Lightfoot and Strax. I actually got to yes. hear that audio. That was fantastic. It was that was fantastic. when they first started getting the new Who stuff, and it was very cool to hear them bring the classic characters together. And that's uh, when we did our interview with Nick Briggs a few episodes ago. Uh, I, I know I threw out there that I was excited to possibly hear, you know, even though sadly uh, uh, Trevor Baxter is no longer with us, right. uh, the great Professor Lightfoot. I was still hoping that, you know, uh, 
Benjamin would still be there for Jago to maybe team up with the Paternosters. And uh, I think he teased that uh, they would be stupid not to do that. So uh, <laughs> I was like, yes, yes, you would. So They're right very across excited. the street from each other. I mean, they just should just do that. Why not? Uh, God. Um, speaking of which, and I, I'm going to throw this question to everybody before uh, before we move on. Given the fact that big finish now, uh, when we have uh, people like uh, Tim Trailer and uh, Fraser Hines, I think is doing the second Doctor, and I think William Russell is doing the first, and uh, occasionally John Culture, John Culture comes in and does the fourth Doctor. I, I remember the, the 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 moment that they had Rogue One and they replaced. Peter Cushing and Carrie Fisher's appearance. And I think they CGI did it or whatever. Do you think it's, do you think it's a bad thing or do you think it's a good thing that we continue their legacy with people interpreting them? Or do you think this should, you know, we shouldn't be do- doing this. Maybe well, that- I mean, I was so happy they brought, you know, Tom Baker finally decided to do it. You know, we've had these great fourth doctor series, especially with Louise Jameson and, mm-hmm. you know, and all the greats. Uh, but like I said, I, as a Brigadier fan, we can't get Nicholas Courtney back. And I was very right. sad. But, you know, now they've got these the, the third Doctor Adventures, and the guy they've got doing them, whose name escapes me again, is spot on. He's Nicholas Courtney to me, and it's amazing. Yeah. The guy they've got doing the third Doctor is amazing. And, uh, you know, and then they still have Joe uh, Joe Manning, you know, you know, uh, you know uh, Katie Manning. Katie Manning, Joe. yeah. Yeah, and, uh, you know, and so that, you know, you've still got the continuity, but you don't, everybody's spot on in it and it's amazing and then they throw in the master and then they throw in you know others and it's and it's um you know it's it's good it, and it's a lot easier with the audio because you don't get that phantom valley you know the the fake looking cg and you hear them and i see nicholas courtney and it doesn't help that pluto tv just got all the classic who that has that classic who channel now mm-hmm. and then uh and so that was uh and because of that, it's so easy to picture them in their classic mode, too. So, because I've been binging that on top of it. So. Well, we're just giving the plugs away. Pluto TV, Podcoin, Big Finish, everybody's getting a plug hey, for Pluto TV, there. free Brit box. You can't go wrong with that. And you know, That's you true. You can find a few commercials here and there. I, I, and I got, uh, what do you guys think? And anybody can pick at this uh, before we go back to commercial break. What do you think about some, because somebody had mentioned that they were looking into finding somebody to replace Sarah Jane. Liz Sladen, and and I think people were feeling a little uncomfortable about that. Some people were going like, "Well, too soon," or maybe she should be left alone to do to continue on the Sarah Jane adventures. I mean, do you think this should be something we should be looking into, or at some point we got to say, "No, that's it." Well, as long as they you know treat the character you know with the proper respect, I I don't see a problem recasting anyone because look at you know look at what they've done here on Big Finish. You know they brought in John Coleshaw to do the Brigadier, and he does them so perfectly and so well. Plus the writing matches him dead on. Then you also have they brought in um, Caroline John's daughter Mm -hmm. to do her voice as Liz Shaw. And as long as I you know as long as they treat the character with the proper respect and get you know the writing's good, I don't see a problem with it. Absolutely I, agree with Brian. Absolutely agree. And I got to give Trim. I, I'm hoping we we get him on the show, but I'm, I'm hoping. Tr- I, I want to give uh, props to Trim t- uh, Tim Trailer. He not only hits it spot on, but you can close your eyes and think that it's John Pertwee. Yeah, in his shoes. he's got the mannerisms. Yeah. He's got the style. The way that he talks to Joe Grant. The way he talks to people. He nails it audio wise. Well, that's how he got the role. Um, he was doing the voice of a dandy for um, Destination Nerva. And Tom Baker was in the other room, and he was listening to him, and he goes, he turns to, um, I think it was one of the producers, goes, oh, my God, he sounds just like John. And that's, and how, that's it, how it started. And that's how it starts sometimes. Yep. yep. Now on Amazon.com, I coin from author Jeremy Mosby. It's an alternate reality, and the leader of the planet iCoin is none other than Benjamin Franklin. When corrupt officials threaten not only iCoin, but the Earth as well, an unlikely chosen one, Jeremy, must face dark foes to save the Earth and iCoin alike. Author Jeremy Mosby takes readers on a superhero's adventure through this compelling and imaginative alternate universe. Get iCoin on Amazon.com today. 
now on Amazon.com. War Calls, Love Cries, a Civil War novel by Mark Berry. Isaac Wells is an innocent farm boy living in upstate New York. His dreams are shattered by a treacherous brother and the onset of a devastating civil war. War Calls and Love Cries is a fast-moving historical narrative. It is an emotional roller coaster ride and a riveting must-read book that you will think about and talk about for a long time to come. War Calls and Love Cries is the kind of book you will cherish for a lifetime on Amazon.com today. Best-selling and award-winning author of true crime and crime fiction, Yvonne Mason is back with a brand new book, The Pink Canary, a book that delves into the life of a drag queen and a marvelous whodunit. You can find this and all of Yvonne's other works on Amazon.com or find Yvonne Mason on Facebook and Twitter. He's going to kill me. Buy your copy of Pink Canary now. From authors Julie Morgan and Grayson Miller, and out of the great city of New Orleans emerges a detective tale to devour. The king of New Orleans is a demon who offers immortality for loyalty. The sheriff is a shifter with a badge who's lost his powers, and Natalia Cortez is the private dick who arrives to investigate a demonic killing. The rest is waiting to be uncovered by you. This dick is looking for a demon fuck. Pre-order on Amazon.com today. Go. Hi, folks. Welcome back to the Legend of the Traveling TARDIS. Again, happy big finish day, June 22nd, if you're listening to us on the day that this episode premiering. But you know what? It's happy big finish day all year long. As long as you're listening to your favorite audios from Big Finish Productions, you know, every day can be a big finish day and, and, and enjoy it. I finally got the app for my phone. And sometimes when I'm working or if I've got a long drive, I catch up on my big finish audios and I listen to them. I, I I, I really, when when I decided to do this episode and pick the favorite Big Finish episode, it's like having a room of 30 kids and going like, okay, you are my favorite. And the other 29 going, no, no, pick me, pick me. Why is he your favorite? You know, it, it's just tough. We couldn't just pick one. It's like Pringles. So, you know, as much as I'm a horrible segue, Pringles, uh, Mackenzie. <laughs> I don't know where I'm going with that. Uh, your favorite big finish audio and why? My favorite is Light at the End. It's mm-hmm. a it's, it's the 50th anniversary of all the classic doctors. And it all evolves around an event that happens in 1963. We learn of a character, and I believe Nick Briggs' is son or daughter was in the audio as well, right? The very beginning, playing one of the children. And we find out that all of the doctors are essentially dying because they're all getting stuck at this one time stream. So it's all messed up and you get to find out how they do it. You think that the master is somehow involved in it, but you learn that there's, while yes, the monster is involved. There is a lot more to it. Mm -hmm. It is one of those stories that it hooks you right from the get go and you just go all the way through. It's a lot of times when I'm in the car is when I listen to big finish so for me, that particular audio, sometimes I will kind of zone out. But that one, I kept the whole entire way through. So that was definitely is my favorite. And I hated for the small drive. I used to have to drive um, a little over an hour away in certain spots. I had to go to Lake Mary and I had to go to Melbourne to go to work. And I hated it because the drives are too short for the big finish audios. I'm like, I, I, I want to go to my car, my lunch hour, and listen, I got to finish this. <laughs> it's like, can I fast forward this? Is there any parts that I can miss and, and just find out the end of the episode? I'm like, nope, I got to listen. I need to listen to the whole thing or else I'm not going to do myself service for the story that it's going uh, that I'm listening to. Mackenzie, what was your gateway drug? Who, what episode brought you into big finish? Well, it actually was the Eighth Doctor. I was interested in Paul McGon, and I'm also a very big River fan. So when I heard that Alex was coming to do some audios for River Song, I first did Doom Coalition, not realizing it was the second one. And so I was introduced that way and how she got involved with Big Finish. And eventually I went to then Doom Coalition, then I went to the River Song uh, Chron- or Diaries, and it's kind of just gone from there. Just and I've been going now, and of course, it's Spotify. There's a lot of the classic ones, so I'm finding that actually Colin Baker is. I I'm going to say Colin Baker is my doctor in Big Finish, which is I find interesting because Ten 
was my new who, but number five, Peter Davison is actually my doctor overall. Mm -hmm. So I find it very interesting how that kind of all happens. And And gang, if you notice that what I love about the big finish was that I, I, I'm trying to phrase this in the best way in honor of him, but Colin Baker seems to get a redemption that he didn't get when he was working on uh, the TV series. Um, and I think at one point they did uh, voting for what was your, who's your favorite doctor in Big Finish, and Colin Baker had won. And I think he's won more than once. And I, they, they, I think they finally gave him the good stories. They gave him the companions. My goodness, even Mel, uh, Melanie Bush, her computer skills were actually put to good use that they had for her. Uh, I mean, they finally did stuff with Perry. Uh, and um, I also, I, I don't want to spoiler alert it too much. And it's kind of weird when Big Finish because every, it goes weird. I actually started listening to Charlie. And the Sixth Doctor, and I haven't gotten through it all the way there, but it, 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 it was it was something that I think the TV series they said they were trying to ignore. They don't want a future companion ending up with a previous Doctor to throw things off. But Big Finish took the big task and threw Charlie Pollard into the past to see the Sixth Doctor right after she thinks that oh spoilers that her Doctor has died, the Eighth Doctor, and. Um, I'm still trying to get into that series. I, ha- I haven't caught into it as much, but I thought that was just cool. And it was so cool that they did it in Big Finish. I'm hoping one day, you know, the only attempt that they really did that was with River Song, um, but not really in a, in a, in the way that it worked. And then Melanie Bush, who kind of showed up in her future self, um, which, which I think people were confused that Melanie Bush was actually a future Melanie Bush has already been with the doctor at one point. I think it's great that Big Finish got to give everybody their due. I mean, we wouldn't yeah. be talking about Paul McGann if it wasn't for Big Finish, except for, oh, he was the guy in the movie. But now he's, you know, there, you know as a must. And then we got the War Doctor, the whole mm-hmm. War Doctor series of John Hurt was amazing. The War Master series, you know, yes. with, you know, yes. we learned what we missed by not having Derek Jacoby for more than 30 minutes as the Doctor, yeah, you know, as the Master. I mean, it's it's amazing. And then, you know, every every little companion gets a awesome piece. It's uh, That's why we love it so much. And not only that, uh, the new episode with uh, the Time War, the yeah. War Valyard. Oh yeah! Wait, <laughs> Does that anybody one. know about yes. it? Yes, yes. Michael I'm excited. Is back as a War yet? Valyard. I'm like, what? <laughs> what is that? <laughs> yes, that's yeah, a thing. Exciting. Okay. I can I, I just can't wait. I mean, I love that the stories that Big Finish takes on are things that we would like to go. You know what? What would happen if a Big Finish answers the question for us? And speaking well, of answering questions, go ahead. No, I just I was to say some of the new stuff, you know, where they're mixing the classic who with the new monsters and then vice mm-hmm. versa, new who with classic monsters. It's just it's fantastic. Yeah, everybody kind of give the criticism, the weeping angels with the fifth doctor and go, how do you have the weeping angels on audio with the fifth doctor? How does that work? It so, worked. It worked. Yeah, it worked. They, yeah, they pulled it, it off. Brilliantly. Scary. Was shocked. Yeah, they pulled it off brilliantly. I was shocked. Speaking of things that work. Artiste Melanie D, you know, what is your favorite Big Finish audio? Uh, when you asked us to go pick our favorite one, I was torn between anything from the War Doctor, honestly. Um, but I'm going to go with the one that I always kind of short and sweet. It's Technophobia. It's New Who. It's the Tenth Doctor with Donna Noble. Love that one. That one to me, it's 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 under it's just under an hour. It's one where if I want to put it in the uh, the background while I'm doing something else, I can listen to it. And it's because it's, it's, it's the doctor and Donna where they are just sniping at each other all the time. There's yes. other times where like the third time around, I'm hearing things where she's making comments, all the different times she calls the train operator, Kevin, yeah. so many muscles, biceps, just keeps calling them <laughs> different things. It's, it's hilarious because because both of them have such a rapid, rapid fire uh, delivery where it, I would almost imagine that the script was probably an hour and a half long, but the way that those two just read it and just kept going and going and going and going, that's probably why it got under an hour. So <laughs> it's, I think the, it's a great arc. I think um, 
you don't have to worry about exactly what time frame it's set in because you start off with just people being, you, you're thinking that at first that the, the, the machines are, are, are taking over and that there's mm-hmm. something wrong with them because people have all this innate fear. And then by the middle of it or towards the end, actually, when you hit, when you hit your, your crescendo of the story, you're realizing, no, um, it's it's just people are becoming very afraid. They're they're becoming dumber. They're dumbing down. They're thinking, you know, why is the toaster moving? Why is something popping out of this machine? Inanimate objects can't do that. And you realize it's just the precipice of them becoming stupider and stupider and losing losing like they're they're, they're, they're like rack of doing right now the ability to form sentences and articulate <laughs> what's going on in their minds. Which side note is a fun little thing to listen to the tenth doctor have that happen to. It's mm-hmm. the 10th doctor. The man has nothing but words. He's in a full dictionary that's coming out of his mouth all at the same time. And now he can't form sentences. Um, so to me, that's the best one. If you've never listened to anything from the 10th doctor or anything, I think this is a, or knew who this is a good little gateway to it. Even if it's just to hear David Tennant's impression of what the TARDIS sounds like. Cause when I first heard it, I had to stop, go back 30 seconds on my little, uh, pillar and go, did he actually mimic the TARDIS and go, oh, he did? How did he do that? <laughs> that wasn't a sound effect. So, no, that, that that's my short and sweet favorite one. And if I'm not mistaken, in that episode, isn't the girl in that episode played Maid Marian in the Capaldi series? In I the think so. Oh. I, think, I, can't, oh, I should have her name Something written down I think here, but I want to say, yeah. Bart I think she plays Bex. I want to say she plays Yeah, she, yeah. I, uh, like how I usually used used to um, give BBC props, and I say, you, "Listen, if you are ever in a big uh, in a TV show in somewhere along the way, somebody else is going to be using you somewhere along the way. So you always have job security. You'll mm-hmm. end up on Doctor Who. It was it was the same uh, jokingly that we talked about uh, with Harry Potter. If you work on Harry Potter, you're going to end up on Doctor Who. If you work on Doctor mm-hmm. Who, you're going to end up in Harry Potter somewhere along the way there. Melanie. Oh, wow. What was your gateway drug into into Big Finish? Gateway drug was the Eighth Doctor. Uh, went you to said a that panel. was my fault, right? <laughs> it was your fault. You were the host of that panel uh, at MegaCon Fan Days eons ago. Um, I can't oh, read. I, I watched it. He did a cold read of the war speech that that was uh, Capaldi's speech, uh, the Twelfth Doctor speech. He did a cold read of it, and I was like, "Whoa." That was amazing, and I remember. I think you were the one that had made the comment of the eighth doctor. Yes, visually you see him in the movie, but he lives in Big Finish, and that honestly made me go, you know what? I gotta, I gotta pick something up, and I can't remember for the life of me if it was the Earthly Child or Relative Dimensions. It was one of those two that I had, I that I listened to, and I started going, wait, this this is good, and I kept picking up more and more eight, and then found wherever, and I'm still kind of having my journey of finding which ones I like, and even before our show, kind of went, hey guys, what do you, what do you think of this? I want to try Jago and Lightfoot. Where am I going first? And, you know, got um, most of the Companion series, or I'm probably screw that up, but yes, yeah, mm-hmm. so so that was it. Eighth, Eighth Doctors was where I started. I, the one time I got to thank Megacon for this. One time I, I actually had a large audience and I interviewed one of the doctors. It was Paul McGann at Megacon Fan Days. And I've got a long story about Fan Days. Um, <laughs> I, I got to tell you someday, but I just remember him being on the stage and him. What, what, he was reading the, uh, the the Stonehenge, Matt Smith Stonehenge thing, right? It Well, yes. Yeah. Hold on, because yeah. I, I recorded it. Yeah, I was apparently quite a few people. Holding recorded. it up. <laughs> It's all over YouTube, and I was like, "Oh, we'll just not, um, we'll not film the fat kid right next to him." <laughs> oh, stop it! Everybody, everybody was recording. I mean, it know, was lovely. We all ate cake. We or if you can find it, listen to John Hurt reading Capaldi's war speech. Yes, find YouTube. that on YouTube. Oh, That's also God. amazing. I'm beginning to love that. This is a thing where uh, current doctors read previous doctor. All righty, and we got a commercial break coming up. Speaking of which, when we get back, I'm going to be asking Dr. Freedom how he got in and what's his favorite Big Finish audio when we continue uh, Big Finish Day. Come on. The Rite of Wands. One boy, one right. And a world of deadly secrets that could change the course of history forever. It's time for The Rite of Wands by Mackenzie Floor. When a horrible fate reveals itself during the Rite of Wands ceremony, Mirda must find a way to change his destiny. Forbidden from revealing the future, he is granted a wand and magical powers in order to save himself and those he loves. 
But Myrda is not the only one with secrets. The Ride of Wands by Mackenzie Floor, available on Amazon.com now. Every year, tens of millions of people flock to Florida for its sunny beaches and world-famous tourist attractions. Most never learn about the strange and unusual locations just off the beaten path. From the UFOs of Gulf Breeze to Robert the Haunted Doll in Key West, learn about the myths, monsters, and legends from the dark side of the Sunshine State. With author Mark Muncy and illustrator Carrie Schultz in their books, Eerie Florida and Freaky Florida from the History Press. Find them at eerieflorida.com or wherever books are sold. This is Cosplay Michael with the Hanging Earth Love Show. I want to tell you about my friends at Embellished Effects in Orlando, Florida. They've got makeup, costumes, and props for all of your costume needs. And the team at Embellished Effects is helpful and friendly. Embellished Effects is one of my favorite places, and I know it will be yours too. I'll see you there. Or go to EmbellishedEffects.com and remember, cosplay is for everyone. Discarded by Michael J. Allen. In a world where magic is sold like designer coffee, unknown forces have corrupted it, and it's killing people. Now, an unlikely hero emerges. A homeless ex-con creating spells out of a trash can is the only one who can save the city. Michael J. Allen's Discarded. Available on Amazon.com. Murder by the Gods from author William G. Collins is available today. Murder by the Gods is a mystery thriller set in the glorious past of ancient Egypt when the son of the Scorpion King suddenly collapses after receiving a mysterious threat from the god Seth, the prince is convinced it is the gods who are trying to kill his family. Murder by the Gods is filled with adventure and romance in a kingdom that would become known as the Land of the Pharaohs. Murder by the Gods from author William G. Collins is available on Amazon.com today. Go. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to The Legend of the Traveling Tardis. My name is Christian Bays. I'm here with author Mackenzie Floor, artist Melanie Dean, writer of Erie, Florida, uh, Mark Muncy, and my favorite doctor on YouTube, Dr. Freedom himself, Brian Burress. And that is the man I'm going to be asking now. What's your favorite Big Finish audio? Colin Baker is the space god on Big Finish. Um, the one story, like I said, there's been many, many stories. It's very hard to choose a favorite because each doctor has their best one. But the one I always come back to eventually is a very creepy tale, a tale that will really send shivers up your spine called The Nowhere Place. Wow. Because it's literally set you know, in the future, about 22nd century, and then suddenly on this space carrier, this door appears, and it looks like it doesn't look like any of the airlocks or it looks like a train door. And then every time you start hearing this train bell ring, people for some reason start marching towards that door and then the door opens and then they disappear into oblivion. And it's just creepy, creepy, creepy because as you go further along, as the train bell rings, more and more people start heading for the door and eventually the doctor's companion, Evelyn Smythe, who, by the way, is awesome. If you've not heard her before, she starts heading for the door. And then the tale took a really weird turn. It's like an episode of the Twilight Zone combined with Doctor Who. It really is. Yeah. It has that feel to it. And that's why it always sticks out in my mind. And I can always go back to it and still listen to it and get just a little bit creeped out every time I hear that train bell ring. <laughs> it's just really awesome. There's some really scary stories. I mean, really stuff that makes you want to think. I mean, one other thing with, with me and the Holy Terror, but I mean, just like there's some episodes where the episode's over and it makes you sit there for probably hours on end still after you've listened to the audio gone, uh, you know, you're still thinking about it. It's still rolling in your head. It's still going in your brain going, oh, my God, did I just listen to that? And it opens your mind to strange and weird possibilities and stuff like that that you never even thought of. That's how powerful Big Finish writing is out there. It's incredible. But what was your gateway drug into Big Finish there, Brian? I literally started all the way back at the beginning, uh, Sirens of Time. Um, there you go, the first one. Yeah, because I had no idea this stuff was going on. Then one day a friend of mine goes, hey, Jen, you know that they're in these on audio? And I'm like, what? Are you kidding me? I didn't know. And so he lends me a copy 
of the Sirens of Time, and I pop it in, and I was like, wow, because this was an adventure that took place with the fifth, sixth, and you know, seventh Doctor. Mm-hmm. And so it was you know, starting off with a three-Doctor story. And it just goes really, really oddball from there until it ties it up beautifully in the end. And I've just been hooked ever since. I just, um, I don't know. What, the, the things that people tell me, it's similar to, like, Doctor Who, if anybody wants to jump in. And I know we tried to address it beforehand. Yes. But when it comes to, like, Doctor Who episodes, everybody says, where do you start? Where do you begin? And I always say, well, if you're very new to Doctor Who, you would probably want to start with Rose because you don't want to go back to unearthly child <laughs> unless you are somebody who's very tolerant of low tech black and white 50 uh 50 and 60 styles like you know technology where you uh, you know where the you, wibbly wobbly does mean the sets <laughs> so um where where would you think would be a gateway drug for somebody who said i'm interested in big finish where would you go and anybody can pull this in there I would say go with your favorite doctor or your favorite companions, your favorite character, and look. And there, and Big Finish has got it. I mean, there, it's going to be there. It's you know, if you're if you're a Tenant and uh, Rose fan, there's a Tenant and Rose episode. There's a uh, there's there's box sets for if you just like Torchwood. Mm-hmm. I mean, the Torchwoods are, we haven't even talked about that. There's some amazing Torchwood yeah. episodes. And then they've got all their other favorite shows, you know, non Who that they've been doing, uh, you know, that are amazing. I love their Dark Shadows. Uh, series too, because uh, I grew up on that. I'm dating myself a little bit there, uh, but um, but no, uh, you know the, the fourth Doctor box set's great for classic Who fans. There's, it's just find who you like and go with that. And then me, I went for writers. I was a Mark Gaddis fan uh, for a long time. So before I actually got into the main range, I looked for episodes that he had written. And uh, you know, and that's uh, you know, and there was one that was a tribute to War of the Worlds, one of my favorite books and favorite radio plays and all that great stuff. So I was like, well, I've got to listen to this. And uh, that's an amazing story too. Uh, there's, you know, so that's you'll find it. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I agree. Vader's from Mars. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was I was going to say that I agree with Mark in that go with the doctor that you already kind of you kind of already know and you want to hear more about. It's the okay. I would like an appendix of this doctor. Okay, fine. From there, um, as for like to to kind of also go with the writer thing. I really like the things that James Goss is doing. Because he has a tendency of adjusting his writing style to fit within the theme or the time of that particular doctor so that it kind of seems like it fits with the sixth doctor's kind of adventures or the tenth doctor's adventures. Or, you know, I I really do like anything from James Goss. And again, like the box sets, stuff like that, those are the best ways to go. That way you get a little bit of everything. Also, one of the more pivotal pivotal Doctor Who episodes of the new era was Dalek. And that was all the way back in the beginning. And a lot of people mm-hmm. don't know that that was loosely based off a of Big Finish audio written by the same fellow, Bob Shearman, called Jubilee. And that one is very, very dark, very sinister, and it'll really twist your mind. It's just, oh, sheesh, I don't even know how to describe it. It's a really good tale. So if you're looking for something like that, you can find that as well. Um, there's literally something for everybody from A to Z, you know, from 63 on, if you want to think of it that way. If you want to go back, there's plenty of great, you know, First Doctor adventures now. Plus, they're redoing them now with the uh, gang who did Adventure in Space and Time. Mm. And, you know, they're doing brand new adventures with them. Yep. And so it's just really, really great time to be a Whovian because you've got something from every year to go pick from. Yeah. And Big Finish connects the dots where you didn't even think there were dots or you didn't think like the most recent episode is Captain Jack bumping into the Sixth Doctor, which we'll, hopefully we'll be reviewing sometime very okay. shortly. Yes. Yes, Things yes. like that. We don't know if we would ever see them on the TV, but in audio, that's that's something great there. Plus, um, I almost I almost flip when I heard a Peter Davison adventure when he looks over. He goes, "That's a hospital ship." And Tegan's like, "Well, how do you know?" He goes, "Because it has the green crescent moon on it that signifies our hospital for most areas." I'm like, "That's new series stuff." <laughs> <laughs> they, 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 yeah, actually, have you guys heard um, the new one with Colin and 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 uh, John? Yeah, I haven't. Too. So I'm yeah, like, they, I haven't yeah. listened yet. Yeah, I just I'm, listened I'm, to the new Unit series with River Song, and that was amazing. Let's just say there's a few nods to there. There is a, one nod in particular to a current thing that's going on right now that you're <laughs> like, oh yeah, they just make mention of it, and I was just like, 
oh, you did say that. <laughs> and I thought it was cute there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, guys, I will you... say new unit, Osgood and River Song together. Yes. Perfect yeah. combination. Mm-hmm. Also, they just had that one where they paired up Captain Jack with uh, Katie Manning as Joe Grant, uh, the green light. one. Yes, yes, that's on my list for this week. So. <laughs> <laughs> they were so cute together. They were so awesome together. And we'll they be just, yeah, they bounced off each other so well. It was awesome. And it, it's not only that, but they really stuck to their characters. They really stuck to them. I mean, John, uh, uh, Captain Jack was Captain Jack and Joe Grant is Joe Grant. And you could see how their cores actually do bump into each other. And they did have an argument, which like, oh, this is for real. This is, you know, it's not just all fun and games. It's, it's real brass tacks. And they stuck to their characters so well out there. Well, I'm glad you guys asked me what my favorite finish <laughs> <on> was. <laughs> hey, Christian, you got a minute and a half. What's your favorite yeah, uh, big finish? And what's your gateway drug? Okay. Well, my gateway drug was the Holy Terror. Um, and I actually have three, but I got to narrow it down. So I'm going to mention them because they're my honorable mansion. You mentioned Rob Sherman, Scherzo. And Scherzo is either you love it or you hate it. There is no middleman. Basically, it takes place after uh, Zagreus and the Eighth Doctor and Charlie are zapped into another universe. And basically, uh, I remember an interview with Rob Sherman where he goes, I was told to write an entire universe for two people. And that was the premise of Scherzo. And it's supposed to be a universe that has no laws. No laws of physics, no laws of time. Everything that you know and believe in in this universe does not exist, and how those two get through it there. But, uh, and the Trial of the Valyard, if you're a big fan of the Trial of the Time Lord series, that won't let you down, especially now that they released series 20, uh, season 23 out on uh, on box set now. And there's supposed to be 11 hours of un, uh, uh, missing footage or new footage and stuff like that. But since we only got a couple minutes left, mine is the all-consuming fire. Nobody knows that one. The no. Seventh Doctor meets Sherlock Sorry. Holmes. Ooh. Uh, tell no, me about I don't remember that one. Yes. Tell me that team up is, n- and not only that, but Bernice Summers in there flirting with uh, Doctor Watson. Well, yeah. a little more happens than that, but um, yeah. <laughs> I th- I, I, well, they don't. Uh, we they don't address it, but I think we can safely say it does. But uh, yeah, uh, I, I wish I could tell you about more, but folks. Um, I got to cut it right here. You're going to have to talk to me sometime about Big Finish and my Big Finish audios there. We want to wish everybody who's listening a happy Big Finish day. We want to wish everybody at Big Finish more success over and over and over again with audios that just blow our minds every every single time that we listen. You guys got to try it. If you're just needing your Doctor Who fix, Big Finish is the place to go. You can get the app. You can go on their uh, Big Finish site, bigfinish.com, and get whatever you want. And if you want recommendations, you're more than welcome to come and ask us right away there. Um, but I digress. I meant as all things come to an end, just like big finish stories with this episode's come to an end. And now we want to introduce you as a bonus feature. Tonight's closing song is simple by the indie grunge rock group duo turbo widget out of uh, the turbo widget out of St. Louis, Missouri. So, guys, thank you for joining us. Wherever you listen to us, continue to listen. We're going to try to put out a show every week for you, wherever you find us, iHeart, iTunes, everywhere in the universe. Thank you for joining us, and always become part of the legend. All right, Hanging With Team, take us out. Don't make things complicated. All I need is a gypsy woman. And a place to lay my head. and famous It's too much trouble Too much sacrifice Said I don't need that in my life Cause I'm a simple man A simple plan I just want to live free And a simple plan Too 
Hey! 